Hi everyone, just wanted to talk today about the My Energy Hub and give you a brief description of what it's all about. Basically you've got a Zappy charger and that's a standalone unit that uh, is charging your car. It doesn't have the ability to connect to the internet, so if you need a new firmware version, then you can't download it from the internet and get that updated version. So that's the first thing the hub provides. It provides a gateway to the internet, to the My Energy servers, so you can get those latest firmware versions and then get them uploaded onto your Zappy. The way it does that is in a two-stage process. Um, the My Energy Hub connects to the internet uh, with an RJ45 cable just into the back of your router that goes off to the internet and can download software from the My Energy servers. And those downloads go to the hub itself. As a second process, you can pair the hub to your Zappy charger and then transfer that firmware that you've already downloaded from the hub onto the Zappy charger. It's not quite a single stage process, I guess that will come in the future, that the hub's functionality is bound to go inside the Zappy at some point, either as an option or as a standard build feature. But at the moment, the hub is a two-stage process. In addition to the firmware downloads, there's also the capability of seeing and controlling the Zappy charger over the internet via your smartphone. So because you have a connection from the Zappy to the hub, and then you have an internet connection from the hub to the MyNG servers, you can download usage data, so your house consumption data, your solar generation data, your charging data, all of that can go to the MyNG servers. With an app, you can access that information completely independently of the Zappy. It doesn't have to be anywhere near it. It's just an internet connection from your phone to the MyNG servers to see the data that's on it. So that visual reference as to how much solar you've got, how much charging you've been doing, all that sort of thing, your charge history, the data, the graphs, absolutely brilliant. But on top of that, you can control it. So for all the things that you have to go out to the, the Zappy itself, whether it's in your garage or outside your house, if you have to go to it and stand in front to look at it and to change the parameters on it for any reason, you can now do most of those things via the app. So you can do it in the comfort from indoors, in your armchair, or not even at your house. So there's a second reason for getting the My Energy Hub. It's £85. Um, you can get it from the My Energy website or contact them and contact their sales team. So there's two different ways of getting it. But whether you want it or not, well, if you've got a fault with the Zappy charger, then really My Energy should be resolving that fault and you shouldn't need to buy an extra piece of equipment to get the latest firmware to uh, fix those problems. But if you want new functionality and you want uh, the ease of having features improved and faults fixed, then obviously it is a good thing to have. And for me, I like using the uh, app, so I would buy it just for the app anyway. Um, it really is worth it. The app itself is free. There's no subscription. There's no fee to buy it. So basically, once you bought the hub, that's it. There's no other expense. Well, here it is. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting, and uh, the My Energy Hub has arrived. So, time for me to try and update the uh, firmware version on my Zappy because I do have some issues with it and I can't wait for those to disappear. Let's see what's inside. Okay, piece of paper. Please note that the menus might be different once you've updated it. A registration card, win £250. Yep, do that. Manual? No, we don't need that, do we? <laughs> of course we do. Uh, land cable. Power adapter. What have we got here? Uh, the different adapters for the power adapter, depending on what country you're in. That always annoys me. Why do you, why do you have to send three when it's the UK one? Why not just put the one in? Bit of a mystery. And I presume this is the hub itself. So let's have a quick look. Yep, one hub. So one handed. Let's see if we can do it nice and gentle. One magic little hub. Okay, let's have a sort out. Uh, plastic, no. No, that's an American one, isn't it? That's a European one. We don't want Europe, do we? Don't talk about Brexit. So there you go. Power adapter in. 
uh, RJ45 cable, a uh, very flat one. Nice, like it. So, all we have to do is plug the RJ45 in and the power socket into there, like so, and we're good to go. Well, yeah, okay, after reading the manual. <laughs> First thoughts? Well, I must confess I didn't expect any plastic and any things to be going straight in the bin, so um, that was a bit of a surprise having the extra pieces from my energy. But the device itself, um, quite um, low cost, which I like. Um, I don't want it to be a high cost item because I want as many customers to have it and not feel that they're having to pay for a, a huge amount to get it. So yeah, I like that. The um, power cable and the RJ45 seem like nice quality. Yeah, I mean, it, it's got some movement to it, but I suppose it's supposed to have because the top is supposed to move for where the buttons are underneath. Uh, it's got some mounting uh, things here so you can put some screws on the wall and have it fitted permanently and um, that seems quite like a nice idea I don't know what the push means I couldn't see that in the manual next plug it in and see if it works okay here it goes let's plug in Well, that's a bit of good news, isn't it? A bit of data. Okay, so we have a green server light and then it flashes. That's what the manual says, I believe. Ah, so we have the server light has now gone blue and flashing. Okay, the manual says plug it in, turn it on, the power LED on the hub will turn green, which it did. If the hub can communicate with the MindG server, the server LED will illuminate blue or green and you can proceed to the next step. So good news, we're communicating with the MindG server. Step two. Now the manual here describes in section one how to download the firmware for the hub. So this isn't the firmware for the Zappi for the hub. It seems to imply it's the firmware for the hub itself from the MyEnergy server. Then in section two, it talks about downloading the updates for the Zappi or Eddy. And then in section three, it talks about pairing the hub. And then in section four, transferring from the hub, that's the update, the firmware to the Zappi or the Eddy. So my first thing to find out is this section one, download and update the firmware for the hub from the manager server. I need to find out what the firmware is for and whether I have to actually do this step or whether the firmware already comes preloaded on the hub. So that's what I'm going to research. Um, is this a section that I have to do or I don't have to do? So I'm going to now look that up online and find out. Okay, so that's confirmed. So it is the firmware for the hub, not the firmware for the Zappi. Um, it, the information I found on the internet doesn't say whether it's necessary, but I guess upgrading to the latest firmware won't hurt. So what I have to do is unplug the hub and press and hold the download button while I plug it back in and then hold it for three seconds. And uh, it can take up to a minute to complete and the I'll know it's done when the LED turns back blue or green. So let's have a go. Unplug. Press and hold. Yep, I can feel a click. Press in. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. So it says it can take a minute to complete, so let's see. There you 
is that done? Because that's less than a minute. Well, the blue light's back on and it's flashing like it's back in touch with the server. So, um, yeah, that looks like it's done. But I'm going to give it another 30 seconds just to be sure. OK, that's done. So let's move on to download the update for the Zappy or Eddy. And what it says here is leave it powered on this time. And on the hub, press and hold down the download button. The power LED will turn amber. And when the server LED changes to white, release the button. And then the hub will start downloading the updates and it takes about a minute. So that seems okay. Let's have a go. Press and hold. It's amber. Turns white. Release. Well, that was simple, wasn't it? So now we just have to wait a minute again. This is the bit that I didn't understand and I didn't really get right uh, when I first did it. Because I couldn't really tell whether it had done anything. So I'd press and held the button, I'd released it, but nothing seemed to happen. There were no lights indicating anything particular had happened. But so I found out later, that's because as I released the button, it communicated with the server, checked to see if the hub had the right version of Zappy software on it, which it already did. So it didn't do anything. And that's the issue. If there is a new release, it will do something. The lights will go white and you'll see a white flashing light for a few seconds or up to a minute. Um, but if it doesn't need to do anything, it looks like nothing's happened. So actually, while I'm sat here waiting and nothing is happening at all, actually, it's already done and ready to go. OK, so for the purposes of this video, the first thing I've got to do is delete my hub because I've already set it up once before. I already know how it works. So I've got to go into Link Devices, Devices, and then remove the reference for the hub. So you just click on it, select it, and remove device at the bottom. Okay, with the hub deleted, it's now as if I'm doing this for the first time, so I can now pair the hub to the Zappy. The first thing you'll do is go back into Devices and Channel, check the channel number. So I'm using Channel 1. You can change the channel number on either the Zappy or the Hub, but they do have to be the same. Okay, now it's time to pair the Hub to the Zappy. So go back to Advanced, Linked Devices, and select Pairing Mode. Once we've selected that, it will be searching for the Hub. Next, we have to go back to the Hub and press the Pair button on the left, which I've done. The light goes red. Now it's in initiation of the pair process. Now again, Back to the Zappy. Advanced menu again. Linked devices. Pairing mode. And there's the hub. You can now see it. So press the tick to select it. And that's it. We're done. And if you look at the top of the screen, it says devices updating. And it's counting down to zero. So I let this continue and let it count all the way down before I exit the menu. Just in case I miss something. And before I go and check the My Energy app to make sure it's working again, because I have destroyed the relationship between the two, I just exit all the menus. Back at the hub, we're all green, so all good. Okay, let's have a go at downloading the latest firmware for the Zappy. Press and hold the download button. Goes white, release. Right, staying on white, that's good. You can see on here, there's some flashes on the LED on the back, so there's some data going backwards and forwards. And the white light's gone off, it's gone green. And flashing again. That's done. So we have the latest version now on the hub. Now I think this last bit of transferring the software from the hub to the Zappy is the most complicated. First press the down arrow, go to the menu mode, then press and hold the X key for one, two, three, four, and then as soon as it changes, press and hold the tick key. Until it says release button, then you can release. That gives you bootloader menu. Go down to download latest firmware, press select, and that's it. Now it's going to download. And there you go, it says section one of two, so there are two items to download. 
and off we go for the first one, which takes it takes a little while, so you have to be patient. So that's it, it's now downloading two of two. Uh, once that's finished, we'll be absolutely complete. It will have reset and left itself at the main display screen, ready to be used. And once the downloads are complete, the Zappy will have reset. But what you can see here is I've lost some information on the front of the screen. And this is the CT clip configuration. It's been lost. So I have to go back in and change it. So back into other settings and advanced and then CT inputs. And there it is, CT2 is set to none, which it shouldn't be. It should be set to generation only. And now the data's back as it should be, so that's good news. But there are a few other things that need configuring first that have been lost in the update of the firmware. So back into other settings, advanced, and down to compatibility mode, this needs to be set off, not on, for the Kona Electric. Basically, it's a setting here that impacts preconditioning and timed charging. And lastly, there's another piece of information that's been lost in the firmware update, and that's in charge settings, the Eco Plus settings. So the minimum green level is now 50%, and I'm needing to change that to probably about 89% and also the start-stop delay. I have that at five seconds, not 30 seconds. Some people might say that's too low because it shouldn't be starting and stopping that much. That's not good for the car. But because I have the Kona Electric, which charges at lower charge rates, then it's not starting and stopping as much. So that just leaves the minimum green level, which I'm increasing now, and it normally goes to about 200 watts of import before it stops. So I hope that was interesting and useful to anyone that's interested in the My Energy Hub. Um, for me, I think it's a no-brainer. It's a piece of functionality that transforms the usage of the Zappi. So for, for £85, I think it's well worth having that functionality. That app interface is brilliant. Thank you all for watching as always, and uh, until next time, see you again soon. Bye-bye.